Hi everybody, Andrew Cunio back again. I'm going to be playing some standard with Esper Control. I've updated my list some since the last time I played it. Uh, main thing that's going on is that I've kind of decided Quick Study is quite good. So I've gone up to four copies of that. And I'm also trying to make this appear. Um, just have a little bit more counter magic. A little bit more early interaction. I did cut one of the cutdowns. Cutdown is like a card that it's either great in a matchup or it's almost completely useless, which makes it hard to play a ton of copies of. It is nice as a one mana play, but it's. Uh, I have four in the 75, but not. Actually, I don't think I even have four in the 75. I have three in the 75. We'll get to the sideboard in a second. The other thing I did is I took a farewell out of the main deck. I think as people have discovered, you know, how to build the good decks in standard more, farewell is a card that kind of doesn't have a lot of the good targets for it, or at least they're not that popular. There aren't a lot of people whose decks are just kind of cold to farewell. Um, those are mostly not very good decks that people don't tend to play very much is the way it's turned out. Uh, so that's one way I made room. I, I cut a memory deluge. I moved another siphon inside into the sideboard. So that's kind of how I fit things. I have left the restless fortresses in my deck for the time being. I'm still a little bit torn on whether or not this is actually a good card. It certainly has had its moments, but it obviously always coming into play tapped is a pretty big drawback. Looking at the sideboard, I've got mostly the same elements that I've played with for a while. I do have, I still am boarding up to four Siphon Insights and a Mirax. This is mostly for mirrors, but also if you play against like a blue-black mid-range deck. Um, really, against any black deck, Siphon Insight is really good in the post-board games. Uh, I think against other decks, it, it, you don't necessarily want it. Also, I think that the aggro deck I'm most concerned about is Mono Red, and I think Knockout Blow is the best sideboard card to have there. Uh, just because you really need more cheap plays and you want a way to gain life. Also, it's it doesn't have the problem that Cutdown has, where when they get their good draw with Kamano faces Kakazan, sometimes they play a two drop and you have your cut down and you can't even hit it with Kamano faces Kakazan because it's just coming into play as a three, three kind of the same thing with Godric where uh, knockout blow is like a one mana answer to Godric. It's one mana answer to something that's gotten a counter from Kamano faces Kakazan. Whereas cut down doesn't hit those things. And obviously the gaining life is pretty nice in that matchup. Uh, the one card I don't have is Chrome Host Seed Sharks. I don't really understand them in the sideboard of this deck. I can't say I've tried it very much. People certainly board them in whenever I play them in the mirror. And occasionally they win, but they mostly seem bad in the mirror. I think people also board them in against Mono Red. And I guess if it's a, a split card that is acceptable against Mono Red and against uh, like mirror type matchups, maybe it's fine. But it doesn't. it's never struck me as particularly good. I generally think that having um, transformational style sideboards is a pretty bad plan because it, it the whole thing is contingent upon both surprising your opponent and them not just like boarding in a way you didn't anticipate where the, the transformational thing just doesn't even work. Like it, it, It's not like when I sideboard this deck in the mirror, even if I'm not really thinking about Chrome Host Sea Shark, I'm still going to have a ton of cards that can kill it because I'm going to have all my Shieldred's Edicts and all my Void Rends. So, and I'm going to have counters that can hit it. So like, it's an okay card, but it it's not great. And I don't really like having sideboard cards that don't have a matchup where they're specifically great. Yeah, so that's why I'm not playing that card. Let's play some matches. This is obviously some form of Leyline Binding deck. So this is not... I, th I think this means it's not the uh, one that's based around comboing off of... What's the name of that card? Invasion of Alara. This is like a more controlling build usually. This 
suppose up the beanstalk is something that I might want to uh, have farewell as an answer to. I am going to void rend it here. We're so early on in the game that they're, they're guaranteed to get some more card advantage off of it as the game goes on. I'm just going to play quick study. I want to keep making my land drops. If I hit an untapped land, I'll be able to double scythe and insight them next turn. I did not hit an untapped land. Alright, change of plans, I guess. Let's start firing off some of these Wandering Emperors. Certainly the first Wandering Emperor is not going to kill my opponent. But we got to start working our way through whatever it is they've got in their hand, which is probably some Leyline Bindings. Let your blade do the talking. We'd like to make a land drop this turn, so let's see if that's what I'm taking off their deck. A delayed land. Sunfall. Sure. Obviously, given my hand, it's not worth fighting over. Which, it's not even guaranteed to die here because the Topiary Stomper is going to be able to block. I have got new moves to teach you. Let's see what they wind up doing. I thought they would at least start with like a Ley Line Binding. I will Shieldred's Edict this, I think. Nope. We'll see if there's something that they're going to resolve that I'm really going to regret. Maybe breach the multiverse. The Sunfall in my hand covers a lot of bad stuff that could be happening here, potentially. And Shieldred's Edict is not a high-value card in this matchup. Keep watch for intruders. This is one of the matchups where Farewell is like kind of good, but it, it, this is usually such an easy matchup. It's, it's certainly in game one that I don't think you need to have cards specifically for it. I hope you're ready to lose. Let your blade do the talking. Probably don't really want to play these lands. We'll make a fancy play here. Put a counter on this. Show the 
Somehow we greet our enemies. And I'll let it die. Until next time, then. So this is three of my four wandering emperors. Um, it's not really a big deal if this one dies either. I'll eventually win with Murex, I'm sure. If I wanted this game to end really quickly, like you know, I was in a hurry to go to the movies or something, I could fight within the negates more, but there's really no need to do it. Do these things hit lands when they're animated? Yes. I've done it. I defeated the Topiary Stomper. Now they're ready to sunfall me into oblivion. Give them two tokens. I'll negate this just because they have so few cards. It's going to make the game end a lot quicker. This is gonna be a savage, restless fortress. I have got new moves to teach you. And then obviously I'm planning on shielded edicting the incubator token. Cards in hand, opponent. That's gonna earn a sunfall from me. I guess that didn't. What I just did made no sense. Should not have spent mana on animating that. Should have just made a token. this thing pretty big show them how we greet our enemies now what are they doing to me they're cycling in response to my restless fortress getting ready to rumble I don't even know what cards they were supposed to have in their deck that would be good in this matchup. They were just like, just straight up all kill creatures cards. I guess up to up to Beanstalk is like one of their theoretical uh, spawn cards. Kami War. Okay. I don't really remember what that does exactly, but I probably shouldn't want to resolve. been wary of playing make disappear in this deck just because the games go so long i guess you do almost always get to counter something with it ah this would have been one of the cards that they could have made me played more effectively if they had had earlier pretty sure this is dead 
going to four from triggers and I can block one. They're dead by a lot. I've got new moves to teach you. So usually these people have like Tyrannus Tyrannax Rex, I think, in their sideboard a lot of the time. Definitely don't want cut down. I think duress is probably pretty good. <laughs> don't really want that. I do want. I don't think I need the, the additional Murex here. I do want the Legion's End. Farewell is going to be better than Sunfall because of the up the bean stalks and all the things that ex all the enchantments that exile. So I'm going to play probably just like two farewells. We'll play Siphon Insights. The one card that I could maybe upgrade is the Shieldred's Edict, but they do hit Tyranax Rex if that's what they have. If I knew like their entire deck list, I might take some of these out, but I'm just going to leave them in. I may have to discard the hand size this game. What have they got going on? Oh, hurt migration. Do have an answer to that token. I think I'll I'll hold off. As tempting as it would be to kill it. That on the other hand. I will kill. I'm going to leave myself the option of playing any of the four spells in my hand, although there, it wouldn't really make very much sense to play memory or to play quick study over memory deluge. So I think I'll start with memory deluge. Just because it's more expensive. something good I really think I need a 1-1 one, one. no land guess I'll take that land so I have one swamp left in my deck to get I lied it's a planes Shows you how well I know my deck. It's a little bit annoying when this happens because it does mean that if I want to farewell enchantments later on in the game, they would get a Topiary Stomper back. So it's not like I have to do that at some point, but it could come up. Also, my opponent has been played a land in a million turns. I don't really know how competitive this game is going to wind up being. I think I'm going to kick this once. And playing this thing off of uh, Siphon Insight is like, it, the UI is so confusing. Oh. Also, I need to be more careful with how I play lands when I have Mirax. Because I wanted to leave Dissipate up, I just capped really poorly. Oh no, they have five mana. Sure. 
Another Chrome Host Seed Shark Believer. I'm gonna gun that thing out of the sky. Well, they managed to get me down to 22. Doesn't really draw me that many cards, given my deck. It does make Memory Deluge quite nice, though, right? game they've fallen so far behind we must protect the people. I didn't really look to see if I should have played a tap land or not I don't think it's gonna matter probably should have Yes, I'm gonna take those. None of those options were particularly good. I'm kind of having a hard time imagining what could even be in their hand. There's one of the Tyranex Rexes. I knew those were coming. Tell me what you what you've been up to over there, opponent. You're just all about the negate life. Sunfall in their deck. Say so very confidently, it's not going to matter. Ooh. More of that guy, huh? Is this thing at eight eight? It is. Let's go blue land. My deck has a lot of blue lands in it. Best draw would probably be Dark Slick Shores. 
I'm sensing that's the top card of my deck. Dark Slick Shores. I was very close with Seacrum because it's going to be another one of these five color decks that generally doesn't have much of a chance, I would say. I'm going to go ahead and do this just because they have so few targets for Annoyed with Affliction. Look at all these quick studies. How did I get this lucky? It is nice that I killed the random 1 1 because now the invasion of Genica really is not very threatening. Guess they're getting they are gonna draw three cards off the courier's briefcase, but this is one of those matchups where it it's really hard to get to a spot where you've kind of fallen behind on tempo. It, it usually just comes down to like what you have left in your deck that does anything against what your opponent has. And they just don't have enough threatening cards in their deck, I would say generally. Might want to slow down on the quick studies just to see that I don't have to discard the hand size. Because I do have, I don't have any cards in my hand that are like actively not going to be useful. So, yes, this is probably going to get hit by Leyline Binding, but uh, I don't really care. I'm not overconfident. You're just under Keep watch for intruders. I'm never done for good. And the question is, should I tap out to make a land drop? I think the answer is probably no. I don't think it matters whether I pick blue, black, or blue, white. I don't really want to care if that thing flips the invasion of Zendikar. I probably don't want to just let that happen. So I'm wandering over it. And then let them resolve whatever their next thing is, which I still have Sunfall and Farewell to clean those up. I don't really. 
These decks don't generally have some super expensive threat that is actually that threatening. I guess Atrax is like... It's going to make the game go on a long time. Oh, they have a Shigeki. Shigeki is pretty nice. That's a good one. What else did I get? Wayline Binding and Make Disappear. Another Invasion. I guess they're deciding between Joint Exploration and Make Disappear. Okay. Back to wandering. Memory Deluge, but I don't want to let them Shigeki back to the Chrome Host Seed Shark. Shigeki's actually a pretty threatening card. Trying to make them have to really work to get the Wandering Emperor off the board. They do have their own Wandering Emperor, which is going to be pretty good for them. I didn't dissipate this, I'd probably be in a spot where I'm using the Restless Fortress to try to block the 3 3 first strike token that would be coming at it, and that's not great. Cosmic Rebirth. Hmm. That's kind of cool, I guess. Is that loop with Shigeki? Yeah, it does. Okay. I don't know why I waited until now to do this, but I did.
few cards they have left. Ooh, they're at 28. I may have made it a little bit too easy for them to get value off of that make disappear, but I do have a lot of stuff I want to be doing with my mana. I'm going to be playing the Leyline Binding, I want to play my other Siphon Insights. I can make counter things with Mirax, I can block with Restless Fortress. All good things. Mirax of their own. I'm kind of surprised that worked. Did I exile the, all their other Leyline Bindings? Oh, that's kind of why. They don't have any Leyline Bindings left in their deck. They have in the yard that can help them. Just the Herd Migration and the Cosmic Rebirth. Cosmic Rebirth Shigeki Loop is a little bit scary. Jade and Defender card doesn't really do anything for me. This is a spot where it'd be nice to have more Siphon Insights in my deck, because I really think decking them is probably how this game's going to end. Maybe I can apply enough pressure to them before they can set up this goofy Shigeki loop, but I, I think that it's really just going to be buying time so they can't before they get the Shigeki loop, like, I want to force them to be fairly low on cards before they start doing this Shigeki loop, where they can, they're going to, I think, going to be able to herd migration, like, every turn once they get to enough mana. The one way, the one thing I can do about that is I can dissipate the Cosmic Rebirth, which probably is going to be a good play. using a ganja to kill the topiary stomper. Let your blade do the talking.
think they should send everything at the Wandering Emperor. That would have put me in a tough spot. So it would have died. I'm gonna go ahead and try to flip the invasion of Zendikar. Oh, this, is this gonna give them the invasion of Zendikar? I may have screwed this up. I think I'm not supposed to do this. I think this is really bad. Yeah, that was really bad. I was thinking I could have a blocker that would help me keep my Wandering Emperor alive, but I would have been giving them a creature. I really just wanted the Invasion of Zendikar to be in exile, and I found a way to do it. disappear in their hands, not that I know of. Excuse me. I'm allergic to this attack. I don't know if this was good. Feels kind of bad. How many cards do they have left? 15. It's probably more realistic if I'm going to win than I would win with damage. The fact that I just lost both these Restless Fortresses is going to make that close to impossible. left in my deck.
seven to my face. I think the opponent made a pretty big mistake with how they distributed their attack to allow me to keep the Wandering Emperor around for another turn. I want to make sure that I get to dissipate this Cosmic Rebirth so they can't just get their Shigeki back. Hopefully they don't have a ton of copies of it. Ugh, that thing. Surrender now, and we all leave with our lives. I brought back Since they got done dirty by the auto tapper, their Murex was tapped. I didn't get to make a 1 1. Perhaps not the biggest thing in the world to miss out on, but every little bit matters. Oh man, opponent, you gotta exile this thing. How many herd migrations have they used? It's one. Might lose to herd migrations. Just put chain together. Hope this is the. That's the new one. Oh! I forgot to plus my Wandering Emperor. That was just stupid. Defend my allies. So you get to keep your Eternal Wanderer for another turn, opponent, because I'm bad. Strike fast and strike hard. They have multiple cosmic rebirths. Rude. You're coming with me. Oh, it's on. I really messed up that I didn't kill that. It's gonna be We've got the way harder to win than it should have been. It's been a while since I've drawn a card drawing spell. Used all my dissipates. I used all my sweepers. I have one left. I actually used a lot of my card drawing spells too. Imagine if I just successfully killed the uh, 
Eternal Wanderer if I had actually paid attention that I had six loyalty. I'll handle this one. Ready to lose. Let your blade do the talking. Perhaps not good enough, though. Remember your training. Definitely not. Nine cards left, yeah. They made a few mistakes, and I made the one big one to not kill the Eternal Wanderer, so I'm going to lose this game. The Shigeki Cosmic Rebirth thing, I haven't seen that before. I don't know how standard that is, but that was... That's actually kind of scary. Maybe I used my farewell too soon. I guess I should have resolved the Memory Deluge first. I think when I exiled stuff, I exiled like a Chrome Host Seed Shark, Briefcase, and a Topiary Stomper. So I did get a pretty juicy graveyard. I think I got one here. The other thing I did was I, I tapped out in a spot where they resolved the tracks, which I probably didn't have to actually do that. That was maybe where I lost, for real. How far ahead am I on clock? Four minutes. I do like playing the Cesper Control deck, but playing it on the ladder is kind of rough. A lot of the matches just take forever. I need to draw my last Sunfall, or ideally removal spell into Sunfall. Does that do anything? I can get up to five life, and they're still hitting me for seven. All right, I'm gonna concede. Rather than erode more of their clock, maybe we can actually finish a match. I think I'm going to board basically the same way. I 
I want two farewells, and I think I want no sunfalls. This kind of assumes that they're going to be boarding in something like Tyranax Rex. They did have a bunch of Planeswalkers, too, so the Void Runs and Children's Edicts are going to be pretty good. For some reason, Arena has attached a plus sign to my cursor. I even scooped somewhat early last game just so you'd have more time. Help, I'm being overrun by briefcases. There's too many of them. Wandering Emperor countered. I think I'm going to do this for now. They're pretty far off from being able to activate the briefcases. Well, so I'm not under huge pressure. That changes things. This fight. Fair enough. It's pretty bad for me. We must protect the people. They have Sunfall in their deck. That also enables them to draw cards off both briefcases, which is... Pretty annoying for me. By doing this now, I'm making it so that if they have a counter, they have to decide between countering this and activating a briefcase.
Surprised I didn't attack the Wandering Emperor. The one one's really not very valuable. I always get the life. I just don't get to put the Wandering Emperor in play. something good. I can't use the discard ability because it's not in my hand. I even have the green mana. Came prepared with the green mana. There's maybe an argument for not playing this Cosmic Rebirth unless I really need to. Just because if I put it in the graveyard, it makes a Shigeki that's in their hand potentially a lot better. I think I'm definitely going to mostly just play my flashback cards. First. I'm going to dissipate this here because I want to use a three mana card rather than this. It, both my negate and my disdainful stroker I think are going to be quite good. The second dissipate is, like, it's obviously good, but it's just going to be awkward having an additional three mana card. Uh, sure. Sure, my opponent conceded in that spot, both because they thought they were going to lose, but also because we were running low on time. That's not a real hand. That's a much better hand. So on them all.
I obviously could have countered that, but I want to resolve my quick study. Hopefully make my next land drop. That failed. I think I, I was right to bottom the land, but it's worked out pretty badly. I'm lucky they don't have a make disappear there. Briefcase. Yeah. I'm not sure whose deck is cooperating less, theirs or mine. Like they should have cracked their briefcase on their turn just to try to make a land drop they didn't even crack it at all so they really want to get the seven mana they really want to leave all right that was i don't know how to think about that these green black decks are, can be kind of hard sometimes for esper just because the uh they have so many cards that are like tenacious underdog, they're just annoying. Two for ones. That maybe if I let that thing hit me, they get it if I leave it so it's in combat. They do get another rat. Given my precarious board state currently and land situation, it would not be good. This is the not fun aspect of playing this deck. The games where you miss your land drops, like, you just don't even really get to play. doing this. I should have waited for that to attack, probably. Just in time. Perhaps not actually just in time. People keeping score at home. Are they gonna have to discard the hand size? They are. Yes, I've done it. Victory is now assured.
I somehow managed to come back in this game. It will be pretty crazy. Much of a roadblock. Sadly, Voidrend cannot hit the creature lands, which is a big problem. This I can maybe beat. Like, obviously I'm going to a low life total, but I at least already have the answer for if it, what happens if it attacks next turn. already at seven. I guess they did uh, they've used pain lands a lot and they used the tenacious underdog a ton. So that's how I got to seven. It's even worth spending mana on this. It's so likely they just have a cut down or a shield or edict or something. I think I'd rather just play Siphon Insight. Creature, please. I think I'm gonna use their mana to eat a food. Okay. You've done it, opponent. You've done it. You've gotten up to 10 life. Not bad. I guess I want to plus at least the once. So I. Have the ability to get, get a second edict. I don't know if I'm gonna plus beyond that though. 
cards in my hand are pretty good, and the cards in their hand are pretty bad. I can't believe I, I haven't died yet this game. I felt so far behind. This is a pretty lucky draw. I drew the Wandering Emperor right when I was going to need it. I guess I already had Anoint with Affliction, which is also a really good card in this spot. I've learned much during my travels. The reason I have Anoint with Affliction in my deck is specifically because of playing against this deck and much similar decks. Home. It's also better against Mistress Foundry if you play against Mono Red. And go for the throat would be, obviously. So they're a fan of whatever it is they got in their hand. Let's just do this. Get in there. Restless Fortress. I've been lying in wait this whole time. Not, maybe I'll find something. I'm never done for good. All of my Wandering Emperors get exiled, they did. That's annoying. I could just blindly go for this. With three Wandering Emperors in the yard, it's not very likely to hit. I could also hit... Memory Deluge. from it. Crazy game. Definitely want another Anoint with Affliction. I think I want the end. I probably shouldn't even have the end in my sideboard. It's just kind of been hanging out to see where it would be good. Cutdown seems kind of bad in this matchup. Just negate a good card. Is 
Seems okay. I don't think I want all of these sunfalls. I think I'm just going to do that. Glad I didn't mulligan. This is why I don't mulligan very often. Is when you mulligan and your opponent has a start like they've just had, it uh, doesn't go well for you. Enough with the mysteries. Drop Probably it. not going to go well for me anyway. This game. See if we can get the three man out of this game. Signs are pointing to maybe not. Done it. I made my third land drop before I was horrifically behind. I think it's more important to resolve this and keep making land drops than it is to prevent some shield or damage. I'm even going to let this hit me. I, th I think that I like totals high enough that I can sacrifice some for slightly better board position. Meaning that I'm leaving up negate, so they can't resolve. Like, if they have the the Nissa that costs 5 to 7 mana, depending on if you play it with Phyrexian mana. Also meaning they can't play... Well, there's a negate. They also couldn't play a backup shield rid. I think now... I'm gonna do this though. So I don't really want to get hit again. Hopefully I just draw my fourth land. It is my fourth land. An untapped one obviously would have been better, but could have been worse than that for sure. They just hit a pretty meaningless basic land. What do they have? Is it royal treatment? Maybe they just have like a shielded edict and they're just giving priority all the time because of it.
of Kamigawa, and I will protect my people. My judgment is fine. They brought a back up. I have got new moves to teach you. don't have a swamp in my deck. So I'm taking duress. What's our hand gonna be? Let your blade do the talk. Maybe a Terra Sunder? One of the cards. Two Terra Sunders, two go for the throats. I think they have all these go through the throats in their deck because they're worried about Chrome Host Sea Shark. <laughs> That's what I, at the beginning of the video, when I was talking about how I don't really like Chrome Host Sea Shark because it's, you're trying to surprise someone in a way that you either may not surprise them or. Like, even if you did successfully surprise them. It may not even work, just because they may not have had anything better. Be That's a pretty big draw on their part. I think it's finally time to put this memory deluge. When I get to the point that I can flash back memory deluge. Farewell is nice because it is an answer to the tenacious underdog, but I, I think I need to get these, the value from these cards in my graveyard first. Or at least I, I think I can afford to. I maybe don't have to because they're actually not in a very good position. Shieldred really isn't going to do very much. If that go for the throat, sitting there face up. Liliana will at least kill something and then probably eat the Terra Sunder. Want more ways to draw cards. Oh, I'm really glad that I took the quick study, given that I just drew a Knight with Affliction. I was a little bit worried that they might, you know, duress me before this next Tenacious Underdog hit.
I'm not overconfident. You're just underwhelming. I am almost just gonna hit with Terra Sunder, probably. Know. Should I counter it? I think I will. Make disappear was pretty useless. Strike fast and strike hard. I'm gonna hold on to this tech in case I want to get the Wandering Emperor back. They can't take uh, both of my answers to their mistress foundry. They can take that though. <clears throat> Try not to miss me. Man, Mirex, your logic is... it's not good. It's pretty nice for them. It seems like a massive mistake. They're just gonna let me resolve the edict. When you don't have the Dread Knight in play, I think that's smart. That's a fine draw. We have a Danissa I was afraid of. Talking to him is better than one sight for an insight. Now that I drew the Wandering Emperor. <laughs> we all have things we'd rather forget. Could be wrong though. much during my travels let me show you hooray well thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed that i would say that the main takeaways from this are I mean, siphon insight just continues to be great it's kind of weird not to have more in the main deck but quick study has also been very good um outside of that there were certainly spots where the where restless fortress was good i didn't have to play against any of the really fast aggro decks where the tap lands really hurt you um, so may, maybe you still might want to play some of them with Caves of Koilos, but I'm going to keep playing Restless Fortresses. Also, that last match where I got to use the end, it was, it wasn't amazing, but it was, you know, I, I was happy to have boarded it in. It, it did exile and also Dread Knight, which is pretty nice. Um, so I think that that definitely has its moments. I could see if there's something you really want to have in the sideboard, uh, maybe not playing that. The other thing I would say is definitely, like we saw in that 
last game three against the green black deck that they showed up prepared to beat chrome host sea shark and the fact that i just didn't even like i didn't have any reasonable targets for go for the throat in my deck they had to just sit there with them in their hand until i maybe made you know a, a token from something that they could hit with go for the throat which i guess is just the wandering emperor or i i could have siphoned insighted into something that they could have hit with go for the throat but for the most part they just had a card in their deck that was completely useless because I did not board in Chrome Host Sea Shark. And I think if you don't board if you don't have the Chrome Host Sea Sharks, that's gonna happen more than you might be expecting. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.